Hello, welcome to my bookshelf, and today I am super excited to do the Try a Chapter tag. I've wanted to do this tag for a while now, but I just never got around to it. My idea is to specifically pick books that have just been sitting on my shelves for a while, books that I personally got at like Goodwill or other just secondhand stores, so they were really cheap, so they didn't really have to be books that I was just dying to read for me to get it. Um, but because of that, they just kind of sit on my shelves, I forget what they're about, and I just, I never put them on my TBRs, and I'm worried that they're just going to sit on my shelves forever. So the goal with this, for me anyway, is to, you know, try a chapter of each, hopefully figure out if I want to read them in the future, or if they really are just books that I'm never going to even want to read, or they're just not a good fit for me, and I can just unhaul them, if that's the case. But at the very least, I hope that this will help ignite my excitement about these books and then put them on future TBRs. And of course, I will pick a winner, if you will, at the end of this, and they will be on my next TBR. So the first book that I'm going to try a chapter in is The Truth About the Harry Kubert Affair by Joel Dicker. Um, apparently it's a thriller, uh, it involves a missing teenager and apparently a novelist and his pro protege. <laughs> I'm not really sure how those three people all, you know, are connected. I'm very curious. Um, so yeah, I will now go read the first chapter and tell you what I think about it. Alright, so I just finished the first chapter of the Harry Cubitt Affair, and I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, I kind of figured I would. So the first chapter is really just introducing us to what I assume is going to be the main character throughout the story, Marcus. He's the protege I mentioned earlier. He has just written his first novel, it was a huge success, and he was just like, you know, living life, really enjoying the success of that. Um, but now it's about like a year and a half later, I think, and he has severe writer's block for his second novel, and he has nothing, no ideas, nothing. And so he's kind of panicking, and he, you know, obviously is being harassed by his um, publisher and everything like that to write a second book. Um, but yeah, so he, he's really struggling with the writer's block, so he ends up contacting Harry Kubert, who is actually this revered novelist that really helped him with the first book. Um, he met him in college, I think. So anyway, he, he stays with him for a little bit to try to get inspired and to break out of this writer's block. And he finds out while he's there that um, like 30-ish years ago, Harry Kubert, when he was 30, when Harry was 30, um, he had this affair with a 15 year old girl which is super creepy on multiple levels and yeah so he kind of stumbles upon this um and he confronts uh harry about it and harry does admit he had an affair with this girl he doesn't really say a whole lot about what happened just that he really did love her and she was amazing but she sadly went missing later that summer and she's never been seen again we know at this point that she's dead it's kind of weird that like we're kind of jumping a little bit between timelines, I guess, a little bit. So the prologue, which was only a few pages, actually it shows us Marcus shortly after the publication of his second book, which apparently is about Harry Kubert. We also know that her remains are about to be found, uh, but they haven't yet. So I think what's going to really propel him to write this story about Harry Kubert is, you know, the finding of the remains of her body. So it sounds really interesting and I am very excited to see where it goes next. I, I felt like the first 30 pages were, they just kind of flew by and they were really intriguing and so yeah, I this is definitely a contender for being on my DBR. I'm really enjoying this so far. So uh, if you like thrillers, you might like this as well. I am definitely enjoying it. And then the next book that I'll be reading is Nature Lessons by Lynette Brasfield. So we have our main character who's living in America and she gets this letter from her mom who is in South Africa and I'm assuming our main character is also from South Africa but at this point she has moved to the US and that's where she's living. But anyway, she gets a letter from her mom. It makes her kind of worried about her mom and if she's okay. I think she tries to contact her but to no avail so then she decides to go to South Africa. I'm assuming returning there, but we shall find out. Like I said, I really don't know the details yet. And yeah, so I'm going to read the first two little sections. They're about 10 pages each, so it'll be at least comparable to what I read for the last book. Okay, so I just finished the first uh, about 20 pages of this book, 
And like I mentioned before, there were the two different sections, and they are indeed two different uh, time periods, if you will. So the first one is set in 1995, and our protagonist is about 40-ish, and things are not really going so great for her. She just broke up with her fiancé, and she's just kind of bummed out. And then she gets this letter from her mom, which kind of alarms her. And so she's starting to get worried about her mom, but she hasn't fully, at this point, decided to go to South Africa, like I said in the synopsis, but she's, she's concerned. And then the second section um, jumped back to when the protagonist, Kate, was 11, and it's like a really unfortunate memory. Like her dad, this is her birthday, and her dad dies, like right in front of her, suddenly, and that's obviously very traumatizing and just horrifying. Yeah, so I'm very curious to see where this book goes next because we know that our main character is going to go to South Africa. I'm very curious to find out what she's going to find there. If her mom is actually delusional or paranoid or if she has reason to believe these things. I'm curious to see if it's going to turn out to be real or not. So I'm intrigued by this one, but admittedly it doesn't quite hold my interest the same way as the last book I read so far so that's where I'm at. And then the next book that I am going to start reading is The Almost Moon by Alice Sebold. And I don't know a whole lot about this one either. Kind of the whole point is take. But I do know like the synopsis mentions a mother-daughter relationship but I don't think it's a healthy one. I mean the last one really wasn't healthy either but this one sounds potentially like violent like they're very argumentative I think. And it also mentions that there's murder involved, and I don't know if either the mother daughter is murdered, or they murder someone, or they hear about a murder. I don't know. Um, I'm kind of intrigued to see how this all works together. So I will now uh, start reading The Almost Moon. Okay, so I just finished the first chapter of The Almost Moon, and honestly, I think I'm gonna unhaul it. I really hated our protagonist. Which I think is probably intentional because we find out in this first chapter that she ends up killing her mother. It's kind of, it's not premeditated in any way, it's kind of almost like an afterthought, like it just kind of happens and she just goes with it. Which in and of itself is awful. Um, and I'm sure that it's trying to explore this like dark side that supposedly we all have or maybe we do, I don't know. So our protagonist is just really hateful towards her mother throughout this entire chapter, which I guess makes sense if it's leading up to her killing her, but I'm just one of those people where I have to connect with their protagonist on some level, on some level. Like, I, they can do horrible things, but I have to at least be able to, like I said, connect with them. And I really did not at all, and so I really have no interest in following her for the rest of the story. It's not even just the daughter that is horrible to this elderly woman, but also the elderly woman's neighbors and people that they help her out because she's she's kind of very dependent on others to do things at this point. She does have some great neighbors that help her out, but they, they're also apparently stealing from her. There's this young guy that I guess fixes things for her sometimes, and he apparently takes up women uh, to her like upstairs rooms to have sex with them in her house. It's just like, really? Um, there's just no respect at all for this woman. And again, I'm assuming that this is done to kind of show how horrible it is, but I have no interest in reading a book where that's the case. Where that's who we're following. And that's going to be seen over and over and over again. <laughs> if the first chapter is any indication of just how horrible everyone is. But I really just didn't like this first chapter. And like I said, it left a really bad taste in my mouth. And I just... I have no desire to finish this book. Um, so those are kind of my initial thoughts on this. I'm not hauling it. I would be very curious, though, if you've read this book, what your thoughts are on it. I mean, does it come around? Does it really, like, make a good point? Is it worth reading? Because after that first chapter, it really is not to me. So I'll be very curious to hear what you think about this. Okay, so the next book should hopefully be a much happier and enjoyable read than the last one. And that is My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick. And this is a YA romance, which isn't normally my thing, but I'm actually really glad that I'm reading this after the last one. I think this will be a really nice change of pace. Anyway, 
Uh, we have two families that are neighbors, and I guess our one protagonist is from a family that I think she's like ashamed of them, or at the very least, she's just doesn't feel a part of them maybe either way she she has some issues with her family and she really envies this other family and she ends up falling in love with one of them and she really i think feels a part of this other family as well and feels really welcomed by them but she has the secret apparently and things happen from there so that's all I know about this book, and I will now read, I guess, the first two chapters, because I was looking in here, and they're very short. So the first two chapters, after I read that, that'll be like 15 pages. Alright, so I have just finished reading the first three chapters, actually, of My Life Next Door. Uh, the third chapter, I just had to read because it was like three pages, but also it's the introduction of our male lead, so I had to keep going. Um, it was kind of a cliffhanger at the end of chapter two. Um, we can tell he, he climbs up on the roof to meet Samantha, our protagonist, and we don't get to see him say anything until chapter three, so I had to get some idea of him. But anyway, uh, the first few chapters were really just introducing the two families and how Samantha's family it does not like the, the other family at all, the Garretts. They, they're very uh, judgmental of them. So Samantha has an older sister and she's being raised by her mom. Her dad is completely out of the picture. And the Garretts have a very big family. So there's a lot of kids and Samantha's mom is very judgmental of this. So that's kind of the introduction to these uh, two families. So naturally because the judgmental mom doesn't like the Garretts, they were never allowed to play with them uh, growing up as well. So they've been neighbors for about 10 years now, but they really not talk to each other. And so I think because the Garrets are off limits and they're right next to each other, uh, Samantha has a little rebellion in that she, she watches the Garrets all the time and she's really kind of enamored by them, I think. So she just, she, she has this spot on her roof where she like is able to look out and watch them and she's just very intrigued by them. So that's kind of the setup of the story so far. It's been really cute and fun to read so far and I've enjoyed it quite a bit. And it's a very uh, summery read, so this might actually beat out the Harry Hubert Affair at this point, just because I think that this would be a really great book to read right now during summer. Um, but we'll see. I have one more book left to try and it's gonna be really weird. So the book is called The Butt by Will Self. Not the best title, but it is intriguing. It caught my eye and it just sounds really bizarre. So apparently it's a dystopian. I guess the butt is referring to the butt of a cigarette and apparently it's someone flicks it and it causes a crazy chain of events that is the story that we're about to read. Um, like I said, it could go really just any way. I could love it, I could hate it, I could just be confused utterly by it. We'll see. Um, so yeah, I will now read the first chapter and I will let you know what I think. Okay, so I just finished the first chapter of the book and I think I'm going to unhaul it. Ultimately, it was just kind of a confusing mess and there were parts of this that I really didn't know what was going on or what they were talking about. Maybe it would be explained later, not really sure. The main premise is just kind of like the setup that I mentioned before about the cigarette butt. Um, so what happens is he's like on his balcony and you know he's he's smoking and he decided you know he really should quit and so he wants to make this his last cigarette. Anyway, so he's kind of thinking about other things and he's kind of absentmindedly smoking and then he ends up flicking it after he's done. And there's someone on the balcony below him, this like older guy who's like laying out and I think he's just kind of relaxing. And there's this young woman with him, we don't know who she is, but she's apparently topless. And so then we have him like looking down at these people at one point and he's just kind of like watching her in kind of a creepy way. The protagonist is like wondering if she's like prostituting herself out to this older guy and I don't know. These are just some thoughts running through his head. And so anyway, he, he accidentally flicks his cigarette on the older guy and it eventually it gives it gives him a blister i guess he does later try to apologize and the guy is actually pretty accepting of his apology 
and kind of says, no big deal. I used to smoke myself, that kind of thing. But then at the end of the chapter, the old guy collapses and the young woman can't pick him up or anything. So she asks for help from him. Then I guess he gets shipped off to the hospital. So I don't know if he's dead or alive or what. Anyway, it was just kind of like a weird whirlwind. And while I'm mildly curious to see what happens next, I I don't think it'll, I don't know. It's not intriguing enough for me to keep going, I guess. And I'm just thinking more about it and I just, I don't know. I think it's just gonna get weirder. And if I don't even understand the first chapter, I feel like I'm just really gonna get lost. And I didn't necessarily like our main character either. There's also a scene too where so his his kids are there with him too and then he like makes this comment about how dumb his kid is and he's like really hard on him and he says kind of some cruel things to him and i'm like really honestly characters are so important i think that's really been revealed in what's happened so far so like to recap honestly i'm going to unhaul these two books and part of it is just i really didn't like the characters and while I'm mildly curious to see what happens next. It's just not enough for me to want to read it. And there's some problematic ways people are treating other people in both of these that also just make me not like it. So these two are being unhauled. So that's kind of exciting, I guess, to get rid of books that are not worthwhile to me. And then these three were all enjoyable. I will definitely read them all at some point. I think the one I was the least excited about while reading it was this one but I still think I will read it but it's between these two and I think like I said before just because of the season the fact that it's summer and I feel like I've been reading darker books more gritty or more down-to-earth books lately that I want to read something more light and summery so I think I will actually go with my life next door and read that in August all right, so that was my try chapter tag. Um, this was actually a lot of fun. It was really interesting, and I definitely picked five very different books. Please let me know what you think down below, and as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and until next time.